How's it going, folks? And welcome back. It's episode number 97 of Park 2 Primera. Today, we are back for the World Cup knockouts. We are in the third round, only the, the second knockout round of the competition. Somehow, we've been drawn against France. Yeah, they're the world number twos. They're very, very good. Kylian Mbappe is their captain. He's also their key player. He might be 31. He's still very, very good in this save game. I've not really been looking forward to this game. I've been trying to put off the inevitable, but today is the day that we have to take them on. And, uh, well, theoretically, this could be the end of Park to Primera for this year. Just as a little reminder, we are going to play through the knockouts today. Uh, if we get to the semi-final, we will do the last two games of the competition tomorrow. Um, if we get knocked out today, we'll have a look at the World Cup and how it ends, what goes on without us, of course, being in it. Hopefully, we will lose to the eventual winners if we're not going to win the entire thing. And then next episode, we'll have a look at the series as a whole. And then following on from that, um, we are going to do a big look into the future here at Racing. I desperately want to try and elongate things out to get 100 episodes of Park to Primera. A lot of that might hinge on winning this game here. So let's talk about it. France, our opposition for today's game. They're, they're quite good. I mean, it's it's the French national team. So, yeah, they're, they're not bad at all. Of course, they've got Julien Fargue, our own player. He's going to be out on the right-hand side for them. Elsewhere, they've got Audren, who is a nutty regen striker. Um, yeah, he's rather good for Dortmund. Uh, not Dortmund, Bayern. Minor difference between those two teams. I've just got Dortmund on the brain because of the Champions League final. But ultimately, it's a scarily good team dare I say. I mean, they've got Camavinga. He's playing for PSG. They've got Teo Hernandez, who's ended up going to PSG. Uh, I mean, it's the French national team in Football Manager. Um, they don't have that many regens, to be honest, but those regens they do have, players like Jougon, um, they're rather good. Uh, so today is going to be a tricky one. In terms of our own team news, um, the good news is, for the most part, fitness is good in our ranks, although Mariba is struggling a tiny bit. So far, though, in the World Cup, he has three assists in two games. I feel like he's the kind of man who I have to start regardless of his fitness levels. If he does start to struggle, we can rotate things just a little bit. On the whole, though, of course, we did rotate for the second game of the group stage. So we go into this game relatively well refreshed. Just as a reminder, three games played in this competition, three clean sheets. Uh, we will hope that that pattern is going to continue today. And while we're playing at the Stephen Gerrard Park once again, for people wondering about the Stephen Gerrard Park, I did a little bit of a look into it. For some reason, England in this World Cup, upon you know getting the World Cup, built a load of new stadiums. And I believe um, the one that we see, the Stephen Gerrard World Cup uh, stadium, is basically just named after Gerrard because he's an England legend. Quite why it's in Wolverhampton, I don't know. Uh, just football manager 2021 things, I suppose. Anyway, in terms of our team for today's game, I'm just looking at this thinking, am I happy with this? Is this the team I want to go with? And I do think it is. It's going to be a very, very big game for Mora. Of course, he is one of the young starlets of this team. The 22-year-old has kind of burst onto the big stage. He doesn't like important matches. That does concern me in a little bit of a game like this one, but we're going to keep some blind faith in him. Of course, Eric Garcia to his left. Really, I feel like today we're looking at the big guns up front. Players like Jose Ramon, who so far in the World Cup has four goals to his name. Need more from you today, please, son. Gunojanka out on the left-hand side has looked okay so far this World Cup. Two goals to his name. Capsi comes into the team. Uh, he's played two games and one sub appearance. A very, very good winger, to be fair to him. Uh, hopefully he can do the business. And of course, Ansi Fati hasn't scored yet. That's not scored yet. Maybe today's the day where he can turn up and show us what he's all about. Maybe he's going to be like the hokey cokey. Oh boy, I'm nervous. I'm a bit excited. I'm a bit all over the place, to be honest. I don't really know how to feel about this game. This is a fixture that I'd really rather not have at this early stage in the World Cup. But you know what? We're going to see how we get on. Hopefully... We're going to do ourselves a little bit of justice. And after years of me being a bottling manager, maybe today's the day we turn a corner by knocking out the world number twos. I say bottling. Um, they've just scored in tw 20 seconds. This is going to end up being the series, isn't it? Where I look back in it and go... I I I, ball, I didn't balls up in a lot of areas, but I was let down in a lot of areas. It's not my problem. It's not it's not me. It's you, the players on the pitch. 
Um, I think you meant to say that the other way around when a relationship's going down the, the toilet. But no, I'm blaming the players here. They have not been good enough in this game. And the fact they've scored inside 20 seconds, that's not my fault. <laughs> it's not great, but you know what? There's plenty of time left in this game. If there's a time to concede, 20 seconds in probably isn't the worst time to find yourself knowing that you need to chase a game. And well, maybe we can turn a corner here because Mariba is going to bring the ball forward, gives it to Jose Ramon, who bursts through the middle. And Jose, my brose, take a bow. That's goal number five for him in this World Cup. He is setting the world alight. Kind of doing stuff that he never really did for Racing, which is a little bit puzzling because it's not a dissimilar system. Of course, to start this competition, he came on off the bench to play on the left-hand side. We played him down the middle once. We're playing him down the middle again to start this game. And uh, with a finish like that, I think he probably should have been in the team from the very, very beginning, in hindsight. He's been absolutely superb. We're back in this game, and we've sent the, the Wolverhampton locals into raptures, at least those of um, them who are in the Spain end cheering us on. I don't know why in my head. I'm thinking it's like the Euros. If you weren't familiar, the Euros semi-finals. I think, you know, Italy got loads of random English people in the Italian end to cheer them on. I like to believe that all the local Wolverhampton fans have been posted uh, Spain kits to wear and turn up for this match. Although, I guess in the year 2028, I'd like to believe all the COVID restrictions have been lifted. Anyway, Aldren's bringing the ball forward here. He's already scored one. We need to be afraid... Or maybe we don't. He hits it into the side netting. 38 minutes gone in this game. They have been the better team. But you know what? Defensively, we've looked fine. There's not been that many highlights. And, well, capsie has got a little bit of space to maybe operate in out in the wide area. And, in fact, he's going to find even more space with this burst of pace down the wing. Pulling players out of position. Now can we capitalise on that space? Or Tiz, the right back, on the overlap. Plenty of players queuing up in the middle. He dinks into Jose Ramon. Messier makes a really nice stop. I feel like one thing we don't talk enough about with Jose Ramon is he's bloody tall. He's like 193 centimetres of pure Spanish meat. Um, yeah, he's not a bad little threat from set pieces, as is Gurajaga when he's taking them. Um, maybe he can provide a ball of quality from open play here. And well, he very nearly did. The ball to Mariba was nice. His finish just wide of the post in the end. But I don't know. You look at the XG, it's in our favour. Um, you look at the total shots, it's also in our favour. And well, we have a corner here with the set piece. It's going to be headed away, but still on the attack potentially because Mariba's there and Ansu Fati scores, but the flag is raised. On first viewing, I thought he was on side here. I want to believe he is on side, but I've also seen enough of FM21 this year to know there's about a one in a billion chance that that goal still stands. I really hope in FM22 we have instances where the goal, uh, well, not the goalkeeper, the, the referee, he puts his finger to his ear, does a little nod, and then gives the goal anyway. That's what we need. And also, those two players are in line. By the, the modern kind of Premier League offside rules, he was onside there. Unfortunately, that's not how the uh, the World Cup works, at least in football manager. As Mora, free header just over the crossbar to start the second half. I'll tell you what, France started this game well. But since then, we've looked like the better team in this game. We are pushing them hard. And in fact, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go a little bit attacking. I think I'm getting a bit excited, but I feel like we need to, I don't know, capitalize on this advantage that we seem to have at the moment in this game. We've created a whole lot of opportunities. And well, suddenly there's only 20 minutes left here. There are some tired legs. Capsi's not had a game to remember. Um I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to move Gurajaga out onto the right-hand side. I'm going to move Jose Ramon out wide, and I'm going to bring in Pablo Torre down the middle. Uh, elsewhere, Mariba is really struggling in this game now. I'm going to bring in Gregera. Um, not the best player going forward, but he's very well-rounded, and he's quite good defensively. I think that could be more than useful in this game here. But uh, we'll hold on to one last sub in our back pocket. Of course, player fitness is always an issue, I feel like, in international competitions here in Football Manager. Whether or not it's going to remain an issue, I suppose, remains to be seen as this competition progresses. Certainly, extra time for whichever one of these two teams goes through would not be ideal. There is two and a half minutes left. It's Pablo with the ball bringing it forward. He's, uh, well, he's our boy, isn't he? Racing born and bred. That effort gets saved, goes out for a corner. There is 50 seconds left here. If France score, it'll be the very last 50 seconds of match play we see here in Parc de Primera. I want to believe, however, 
we've at least got some extra time to look forward to as Julian Farge, one of Racing's finest, lays the ball forward to Fernandez. Or not Fernandez, to Martinez. Where did Fernandez come from? I don't know. Gregera lumps the ball forward. That's not going to find Ansu Fati, is it? It's not. I was sat wondering, are we on are we on extended highlights here? What am I being shown? Why am I being shown it? We're nine minutes over extra time, or added time, I should say. We're on the verge of extra time. Is there one last twist in the tail? Bolde in the wide area tries to get it in. I mean, God, Garcia's going to get the ball, but it's just going to stop. I don't know why I was shown that. We're going to extra time. France did nothing in this second half. We've got more attacking. We've really... Well, put the pressure on them. I've got to tell the players I'm delighted, I think, after that. I feel like if we can continue with this kind of momentum, this is our game for the taking, dare I say. Gurajaga puts it forward. Farge heads it away, but only as far as Jaga, who's going to put it back into the middle. It's going to be dealt with, though, and now France maybe to spring the counter-attack. Guiri on off the bench. Can we get in some last-ditch defending? Of course we bloody can. What a block that was. And, well, an effort from range should be relatively simple for Simon to keep the game at 1-1. I mean, the highlight, it continues. Ansu Fati takes that ball down with snow on it and hits it just over the crossbar. That ball went into the atmosphere before it dropped down for that inch-perfect touch. Looking at things here, fitness, definitely an issue at this point. I'm going to bring in Pedri out on the left-hand side. Guru Jaga can barely walk. Can we make another sub? We can. Excellent. Right, Calderon on the left, Pedri on the right, Pablo Torre down the middle, and Sufati. I'm going to change to an advanced forward. I've made all my subs. I've played all my cards. Now we wait for the turning of the river and hope that the cards that we get shown are going to be cards that put us in the lead. Although this extra time has nothing happening in it whatsoever. We could be going to penalties, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to penalties. And, I mean, we have composed players. They can't take penalties. And that's a concern. Uh, don't live to regret this moment. I love that. I've got faith in you. I've got faith in you. I mean, we've done pretty well here. This is as good a performance as I could have hoped for, I think, against the world number twos. I feel like if we now lose this on the lottery of the shootout, <laughs> it would be the ultimate misery compiler for this entire series. Ansu Fati has just missed the first penalty, by the way. The man who scored against me in the Champions League final can't score from 18 yards, but neither can Guiri. And you know, Simon makes the stop. Two penalties taken, two penalties missed. Can Pedri open up the goal scoring in this shootout? He steps up, he hits it. I mean, that is as good as they come. Smashed home into the top right corner. And now it's on Hannibal Medjbri. It's a full-on Racing Santander affair, this final game. Hannibal steps up and he misses it. My son, we love him. He's a legend. That cements his place as a legend. Pablo Torre now steps up. I mean, I'm not sure if we're watching Spain v France or Racing v Racing legends. Pablo Torre's missed. What is happening? What? None of the Racing players can score. It's now Julian Farge stepping up to try and score for France, to try and even it at one, one in the penalty shootout after three penalties each. He's missed the target as well. What is happening? No one from Racing can score a penalty, it seems. I mean, we're 1-0 up in the penalty. Can Balde score? Of course he can. And now the pressure's on France. They have to score their next two penalties. And if we score our next, we're through. I can't believe what we've just witnessed. Medjbury's missed a penalty. Julian Farge's missed a penalty. Pablo Torre's missed a penalty. It's all on our now. France have not scored a penalty yet. Surely they have to score one in this shootout. Awa does stick it home. Leaves us in a still pretty favourable situation. We have to score here. And if we score, France have to score. In fact, no. If, if we score, we're through. If we miss, France still have to score. And it's Jorge Calderon. I mean, every other Racing player has missed a penalty in this shootout. Can Calderon be the man to lift the curse? I'm done. I'm by everyone. I'm done. What is happening? What is happening? Genuinely, I don't know what I'm witnessing. I kind of feel like this should just be the last episode of Park to Primera, no matter what. This should be the last game. This is the Racing legacy. Audren has to score to take it to extra time, or not extra time, to sudden death. I... I mean... <laughs> 
It's incredible. Ortiz, the right back, steps up. He scores. I mean, it's sudden death now. We've scored. France have to score themselves. Is there any more racing players for France that are going to take a penalty here? Who's left on the pitch? Who's, who's coming? It's, it's not, a, not a racing player. I think all the racing players have had their say in this game. Racing DNA is just bottling it. And we are witnessing it firsthand in this game here. We're through. We're bloody through. I, I mean, that is the most, that is the worst penalty shootout I've seen all year. We've knocked out France. Unai Simon's got an 8.0. I mean, what do you say about what I've just witnessed? I'm very pleased. I, we've knocked out the world number two and somehow I'm annoyed. How should I feel? Like, what have we witnessed? We've got Wales in the next round. We've got Wales in the quarterfinals. They're world number 16. I don't know how I'm meant to recover. I mean, the expectation was to reach the semi-final. We've just knocked out the world number two. Surely this is ours for the taking. Hannibal played, Fargay played, Calderon played, Jose Ramon played. I mean, just, I, I, I don't know what to tell. Right, let's just go to the Wales game. I'm lost for words. This doesn't happen often. I don't know. I, I I don't know. Okay, folks, we're here. We're in the quarterfinals of the World Cup. And I think when you look at the list of teams with respect to Wales, they are probably one of the more favourable teams we could be playing against. There's a certain player who's their manager who's not a particularly pleasant human being. We're not going to acknowledge his existence. Instead, let's acknowledge the existence of Nicky Hughes, who is, uh, well, Leverkusen's finest, I suppose. He is a left back. He's not a bad player, but he doesn't like big matches. And if we just take a look at the rest of their squad, um, it's an OK team. It's not... The craziest team by any means, I think it goes about saying that France team that we just beat is significantly better than this Wales team we're coming up against. In terms of the team that I would love to play for this game, I'd love to go into this match at full strength, but we are going to be forced into some changes. We have played, uh, well, sorry, we've not played. We've had six days since we've last played, so a good chance for some players to get some fitness back. We're going to drop Gregera in to play as the deep line playmaker in the system. He's very well suited to that role. Elsewhere in the team, Capsi and Mariba have fitness concerns. Now, normally this wouldn't be that bigger a deal, and I guess to an extent it probably shouldn't be that bigger a deal, but given the fact we're taking on Wales, I feel like I need to do a bit of squad management here. If I want to go really deep in this competition, I'm probably going to need to manage minutes a little bit so that when we get to the really, really difficult teams, um, we can have the best squad possible. So whilst this is undeniably... A small risk. I am actually going to make some changes for today's game that are a little less than conventional, but are very much about balancing squad fitness. If you played Football Manager, you will have experienced it. In international tournaments, player fitness goes out the window, particularly into the later stages. So just rotating things to keep players fresh is always important. This is probably the last chance I'm going to have to play a semi-rotated 11. And I think we've got to take that whilst we can. So Pablo Torre is going to come into the team higher up the pitch. We're going to have Pedri out on the right-hand side. He's not the quickest player, but he's a very, very gifted individual in the wide areas. And Pedro Porro is going to come into the team at right wing back. Of course, Jose Ramon dropping a little deeper for today's game. Uh, I do feel a bit for Jose Ramon. We've played him in each and every position, it feels like, uh, during this World Cup so far. Today, he's going to play a deeper midfielder role. And, uh, well, let's tell the players that we've got faith in them. I feel like after the game uh, previously against France, we've got to go into this match with a little bit of confidence. I would have loved, in an ideal world, to just play the exact same eleven again. But, you know, upon reflection, rotation's necessary. Uh, I'm really now just hoping that we're going to put in a similar level of performance to the one that we just saw, albeit when it came to the shootout itself. Anyway, we have got a corner here. It's going to be whipped into Morrow, who had a couple of opportunities against France. On this occasion, he's headed over the crossbar yet again. The early signs, however, very, very promising here. 64% of possession, eight shots, four on target. Wales not creating anything thus far. Although with the second highlight of the game, it's going to be Wales in possession. And uh, well, it's deep in our half. Well, in that, I was going to say in our half. It's not deep in our half. It's shallow in our half. That doesn't sound good, does it? It's a set phrase. Um, they're lumping the ball forward here. It's going to be with Woodburn. He plays it forward to Watkin now. Drifting into a wider area. Shrugs off one tackle. Hits it just over the crossbar. If I'm not mistaken, did we play Wales 
in one of our first games. I feel like we played Wales in one of my first international management tasks as Spain manager. Um, I'm hoping that we're going to put in a similar level of performance that we did to them last time we met. In this game, we've probably played the better of the teams in the first half, although truth be told, not a great deal of opportunities. You can see here we've kind of steadily kept things ticking over, but unfortunately, at the break, not an unfamiliar scenario to be in, we've yet to find the breakthrough. Um, of course, defensively, we've looked very good in this competition. Bit of a shame that we lost our clean sheet record against France, but prior to that, we hadn't conceded, only conceded the one goal against France. So far on this game, we've looked solid. And well, if Mora could head on target, we could be a couple goals ahead in this game. He's headed over yet again. And now, well, some defending of our own to be done here as a throw-in in our half it's going to be dealt with initially, but Wales still in possession of the ball. Smothers gives away the ball, though. Does pick it up. And he's going to give it back to Chrissy Mepham, who gives it away to Guru Jagger, who has a lot of space in front of him, all on his lonesome. Raul. What a finish that is by him. Absolutely mad. On his left foot, the left winger takes it all the way, smashes it into the bottom corner. Take a bow, my son. That was a really, really nice finish. The ball given away far too easily. Garajaga runs forward, slots it into the bottom corner. 52 minutes gone in this game. I feel like we take a deserved lead. And with that, I'm going to, you know what? I don't encourage the players nearly enough. I'm going to encourage them here. And uh, well, the defenders like me, the attackers absolutely detest my encouragement. Um, I'm not sure what to make of that. Right, let's make some changes. Mariba's going to come into the team. Garajaga has scored, but he's very, very tired. Uh, I'm going to take him off. As part of our squad management, we'll bring in Mascaros for him. Mascaros, a very talented left winger, would probably walk into most national team sides. Unfortunately, we've got quite a stacked little team. Also, I think Wales just had a really good chance that we've just about dealt with. 20 minutes left in this game, so still plenty of football to be played. A second goal would afford us that little bit of breathing room, maybe the opportunity to relax just a tiny bit. Oh, well, it's Pablo Torre switching it over to Pedri. Who brings it forward down this right side, pulls it back to Mariba. His effort is blocked. And uh, well, Wales living dangerously right now, right on the edge. We are looking by far and away the better team. But for as long as this game remains only 1 0, they'll fancy themselves to catch us out on the break, fancy themselves to have that one opportunity they need to score. It's going to be with Williams here. Plays it forward, but Bolde wins the ball nicely, gives it inside to Eric Garcia. Bolde. To Garcia. Options out on the right hand side. Instead, going to focus down the left hand side here. Bit more of a congested area of the pitch. But Mariba finding some space to rip open the defence, hits it just the wrong side of the post. 17 minutes gone here. We still very much have our foot to the accelerator. We are really trying to push for that second all important goal. Going to take off Pablo Torre and bring in Calderon. Player fitness levels not looking great. Of course, we have just played a game where it went to extra time, so that's going to be a concern for us. But, well, we're on the attack. Can we find that all-important second goal that really would cement, you'd hope, our spot in the semi-finals? We're going to get it. It's going to come via Mascaros on off the bench, a bee in his bonnet, a point to prove. And well, the way he cut inside there and smashed it into the bottom corner... I think he's trying to stake his claim for a starting spot in the latter stages of this competition. Brings it forward really nicely, dribbles past his man, smashes it on his weaker right foot into the bottom corner. It is Spain 2, Wales 0 here in the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. And my friends, we will have an episode tomorrow. It will be a World Cup semi-final. It may be a World Cup final. It could be the World Cup third, fourth place playoff, which would just be the saddest match ever to end this series with. We've looked good, though. We've looked really, really good here. And, uh, well, we could get a third, perhaps, although Wales is going to deal with it. I feel like on the day, our superior quality has shown here. They've not really looked like getting into this game, Wales, although if they get one now, maybe, maybe it flatters them a little bit. Unfortunately for them, Simon's going to get to it. And uh, well, he's going to distribute it to Mascaros, who's come on off the bench and looked absolutely superb. He's bringing it forward. Tries it on his right foot again, this time just wide of the post. I don't think it's going to matter, though. And in fact, that is going to be the end of the game. 2-0, it finishes. A great performance. Man of the match in this game, Eric Garcia. Very, very good game at centre-back. For all the concerns we had about our defence going into this competition, despite 
you know, a few changes in terms of configuration. We're standing up to tests so far. The other teams left in this competition, Portugal, Holland, Germany. Yes, an all-European affair. And in the semi-final, we are going to be taking on Portugal. Oh, Portugal v Spain. Portugal ranked fifth in the world rankings. We are taking on all the big dogs, it feels like. Germany, Portugal, and the Netherlands, who are currently number one, the remaining teams. We are the underdogs, if you want to read into FIFA Club World Cup ratings. Of course, Estevez plays for them. Uh, Diaz plays left back for them. Uh, plenty of our players still in this competition. And, uh, well, I'm going to hope we can now go all the way. We have that World Cup semi-final coming your way tomorrow. We are going to be taking on Portugal and then potentially have the final after that if we win it. That game's four days away, so players need to go away, rest up, try and come back recovered. Easier said than done, but hopefully we can take the game to Portugal. We've looked good today. I feel like we've, we've done our business very well so far in this World Cup. Obviously, a little bit of drama in the first game. The second, slightly more relaxing by comparison. But anyway, folks, that is going to wrap up everything from me today. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. That first match was one of my favourite of this series so far. So I feel like if you've stuck around for the national team stuff to end the series, you've been rewarded with that there. Hopefully we can keep things going tomorrow. Hopefully we can win it all. And well, until then, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. It is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you all in a bit. I'm out.